This training video was developed at the Statistical Services Centre at the University of Reading. It's part of a set of resources aimed primarily at researchers. This demonstration is the first in a series of demonstrations illustrating the use of CS Pro for data entry and checking of survey data. In this initial demonstration, we introduce the questionnaire being used throughout by way of example and consider the structure of the resulting data. The questionnaire is adapted from one used in a survey in Malawi some years ago. This version is much shortened and simplified, but is a typical household questionnaire. The data are at two levels, with parts A and B being at the household level, in other words, one case per household, while part C is at the level of economic activities carried out by household members i.e. one case, or one row, per activity. Part A is about the respondent. You might question this being at the household level. However, there is only one respondent per household and only one household per respondent, giving a one-to-one -one relationship between household and respondent. As such, these data are at the same level. On the other hand, a household may have many activities. So there is a one-to-many relationship between household and activity, and thus these data are at different levels. In designing our data entry system, we need to consider the levels of data we have and the relationships between data at each level. Next, we consider the items or variables within each level, starting with the identification item. This is the item or combination of items that uniquely identifies a case or household. In our example questionnaire, households are numbered within villages. So we need both the village and the household number to uniquely identify a household. Thus, the combination of village code and household number forms the unique identification. In database terminology, this is often referred to as the primary key. You will need to assign names to your items before setting up your data entry system and writing the names on a blank questionnaire, as we have done here, is a useful exercise. As we said earlier, the village code, which we've called VIL code, and household number, which we have called HHID, form the identification. In part A, we have the sex and age of the respondent, and we have called these items resp sex and resp age. These items have numeric codes, so these will have value sets in our data entry system. In part B, we have the household size and the number of economically active people in the household. Now we would want to have econ act less or equal to HH size, and in the later demonstration we will show how to create a check for this in the data entry system. Uh, question 2a has four checkboxes. There are four pieces of information and thus we need four items. The same is true of question 2b. Note in 2b we would not expect values where that particular source of income was not chosen in 2a. For instance we would not expect uh, data for sale of crops if sale of crops was not a source of income. In question 3a, we need seven items. Types of wall, roof and floor all have a limited range of options. So as with sex and age in part A, we can create value sets for these items. The same is true for kitchen, pit latrine and bath shelter. The number of rooms could in theory take any value but we might want to consider a feasible range that we can set in our data entry system, say 1 to 20. It's useful to set feasible ranges where appropriate. Finally, let's consider the activity level items. First, we need an item for the activity code. We do not need to enter the text for the activity itself other than in a value set. 
the code will link to the activity description. This prevents us having to enter the same text several times, which always leads to problems in datasets due to spelling mistakes and such like. For household members involved in the activity, we have five columns, with each column representing a different category of person. We need an item for each column and name these items according to the codes for household members given at the end of the questionnaire. Thus, column one is for the disadvantaged person. Column two is for the carer, etc. Note that throughout this exercise, we have restricted our item names to eight characters. This is recommended because some statistics packages have a restriction of eight characters on the length of variable names. Taking time to go through the questionnaire in this way is a useful exercise prior to setting up the data entry system. We now know how many levels we need and how many items at each level. We also have an idea of the value sets we want to create and some checks we want to program into the system. In the next demonstration, we will start to create the data dictionary for this questionnaire.